Yes. If you want to um, drop into the comments, if you're going to be watching live, um, I'd love to hear from you uh, what your business is, uh, where you consider yourself to be on the business journey uh, before I kind of dive into the stages that I have defined as part of the business journey based on my own experience and my experience of working with um, many, many, many uh, business owners. So basically today, I'm gonna take a little bit of time uh, to run through what I consider to be the five uh, stages of the business growth journey. And the reason for me that it's so important that we talk about this is because a lot of people, a lot of business owners don't even really acknowledge that there are different stages. And because we are prone as humans to compare ourselves to other people, and we will, you know, more often than not compare our beginning stage to somebody else's, you know, stage 10 years on from us in terms of their business journey, it's really important to know where we are so that we can um, be mindful of the actions that we need to be taking for that stage of the journey and um, look at, you know, look at what is reasonable in terms of our expectations. So for example, if we're at the beginning stages of our journey and we expect to be making $10,000 a month, then obviously there's going to be um, an issue there. And you would be surprised how often I talk to business owners at the very early stages of their journey, who, when I ask, one of the first questions I ask whenever I get on a call with a business owner is, you know, where would you like to be in three, six and 12 months? And uh, you would be probably surprised or maybe not because maybe you're, you've uh, fallen foul of this yourself. How many people will expect to be having their business completely covering um, their outgoings and their expenses and then some, you know, within six months of starting? And um, hopefully today it's not just going to be me bursting your bubble, but I just want to stress the importance of knowing where you are in the business journey and then uh, adjusting your expectations accordingly and knowing what what, what things you should be focusing on because they're very different uh, depending on the stage that you're at. So let's have a look at the comments. So we've got Sh uh, Sean, I'm, uh, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Tell me if that's correct. Laura and Gillian. Um, so Gillian saying she's at the start of the journey. Um, welcome to the journey, Gillian. It's, it's uh, a fun ride. And Laura and Sean, if you want to also just drop in to the comments where you consider yourself to be in, in the business growth journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the overarching titles that I've given to these stages and then I'm going to go through them in more detail. So as I see it, there are five stages. Um, number one is desire. Number two is prepare. And if you're if you've got pen and paper, you can take you can take notes there. Um, number three is begin. Number four is sustain. And number five is prosper. And so I'm going to just go through each of these. I will refer to my notes on occasion because I want to make sure that I don't miss um, some important information. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each stage. And if, you know, what I'm sharing resonates with you, please feel free to say in the comments, you know, this is, this is where I'm at or this is something that I'm struggling with. If you have questions, ask me. I'm here um, precisely to answer any questions you have. Um, I have it all set up that I can see the comments um, so as they're coming in so you can you can just interrupt me at any point and ask me a question. So starting with stage one this is in some ways what I call you know uh, it's a bit pre the journey it's definitely pre bit what I would call pre business and this is where there's a desire to start a business. Now a lot of people hang out here for a long time. I myself um, I quit my uh, you know, well-paid career in program management uh, back in, when would I have finished? I think I finished in 2012 and I didn't actually start making money with my business to, to, until 2014, mainly because I was traveling around Southeast Asia, doing lots of yoga, um, having a break, having hustled in my career for many, many years and just, you know, refining myself and, and looking at what I wanted to do with my life. But I was in that stage of, um, I want to start a business, um, but I don't. I didn't really know 
how to um there was just there were so many questions uh there were so many i didn't even know i think for the longest time what questions i needed to be asking now one of my favorite coaches uh steve chandler says everything you could ever want to know about building a successful business is on the internet for free you can get that information for free um but being it as you'll probably know if you've ever tried you know trying to get all of the information um, that you need to grow a successful business in a way that is not overwhelming and that you know makes sense to you and that you can put it into practice and is aligned with your values and your particular industry is not an easy task so a lot of people hang out here um, a lot of people hover on the scenes of you know there there will be people I myself ran a female business academy a few years back where the whole point was it was a service the membership service that I was offering for business owners who wanted to um, build and grow successful businesses many of the women in that group actually didn't have businesses but were showing up to the calls week after week and uh, participating in in the classes and all of that stuff but hadn't yet even decided what business they were going to do so it is a place that people hang out and you can get stuck there Um, and you know the focus my suggested focus for this stage is you know to to avoid spending too long at this stage you know try and get into action as soon as possible um a lot of people sit there and they're trying to figure out the perfect business the perfect product the perfect service the perfect name um before they'll take any action and i'm anyone who knows me knows that i'm a big big believer in action and i'd much rather that you move into action uh, before you have things figured out, uh, then then wait for the perfect the perfect moment. So, moving on to stage two, which is what I call prepare. This is where you move beyond thinking about your business and you have started taking action. So maybe you've you know decided on a name. Maybe you're starting to build your website. You've created a Facebook page. You are starting to do some of the things that you believe. Um, are needed in order to have a business but you you haven't actually ever exchanged a product or service for money so um, you know you're you might be at this stage getting things ready for that first client and a lot of people again get stuck here because they they they're in action but they're focused on the wrong thing so something that I see a lot here is people getting very hung up on the look and feel of their website, their brand, uh, having a website, what the words on their website say, what their niche might be. And you might be thinking, well, these are all, you know, good things to have. These are all business foundations, surely they are. But if you're here um, focusing too much on trying to create the perfect business um, and you've never actually practice launching a product or doing a coaching session with a client or um, pitching your services then you don't know at this stage if what you're creating the brand the visuals the words the um, you know all of that stuff the niche um, or niche depending on where you're from um, is the right the right move forward so again this is a stage where I'd say you know take action but make sure that you're you're talking to people so again what a lot of people do is they they try to build everything you know behind the scenes before they start engaging with the public with their audience with their people because they want it all set up first because who's going to hire me if I don't have you know a perfectly professional um, looking website with gorgeous pictures and all of that stuff so but actually you won't know who you are you know if you've ever tried to write an about page or a home page uh, copy for your website before you've ever even talked to a potential client or done a practice coaching session. If you, I mean, I use coaching a lot because I work with a lot of coaches. Um, it's impossible. It feels impossible. It's really tricky. So uh, the focus here is make sure that you're creating solid foundations for your business, but taking actions that get you out in the world, making connections, all of that stuff, um, talking to people, finding out what people want I at this stage I talk about uh, you know a lot to my clients about practice in their niche if you're not sure yet what you the problem you solve and who you solve it for which is my definition of niche um, practice you know go out and talk to people uh, you know I, I'm 
you know, I mean, I'm thinking of an example, a business coach, for example, and I'm not sure yet if I want to work with absolute beginners or if I want to work with people who want to take it from six figures to a million, you know, or seven figures. So I want to talk to different people at those stages to see how it feels. How do I like those kinds of people? You know, do, does it make sense for me to work um, within that problem area. So, uh, you know, to give you an example from this week, I was talking to one of my clients who is in this stage of practicing with different niches um, and doing lots of market research calls and offering uh, free sessions to kind of get a feel for who does she love to work with? What are the kinds of uh, characteristics and traits uh, that they love to work with? Um, and what problems light that person up? So for example, one of the calls that they did was uh, around motivation. And what my client said is, I actually realized I don't, I don't really enjoy that topic. It's not something that, that lights me up. And that's what you wanna be doing at this stage, um, making sure you can get out there. So stage three is what I call begin. And so I see from the comments that Laura has said number three for this. So hopefully this relates to you, Laura. Um, and this is where you can call yourself a business because, you know, a lot of people will say I have a business, but they've never actually exchanged any money for products or services. Um, in my opinion, it's a business when you've, someone's paid you to do something, um, either paid you for something that you have created or paid you for a service that you're delivering. And so this is where you've made a sale or even you know a few sales and you know that it's possible because if one person is gonna pay you um, for a service or product, then the likelihood that more <laughs> will follow is pretty high. And so you know at this stage, we tend to feel amazing. You know, the hardest, I remember when I first started my business and I worked with my business coach and he said, the first dollar is the hardest dollar you'll ever make. And it's, and it's true. And once you do it, once you, you know, you break the limitations of your own thinking to know, yes, I can make money. Somebody, there are people in this world who are going to pay me, um, potentially, um, for my services, then, you it does something to your mindset it does something to your energy and and um, you're much more likely to get more sales however um, at this stage what can happen is we we break through that barrier of getting the first client or the first few and then it goes quiet again so i talk to a lot of people who are like well i had like an initial um, rush of clients or you know two or three and then nothing for a year or six months um, and this is because at this stage, at begin, you haven't yet um, figured out what your system, your kind of consistent system to bring in um, uh, ongoing clients and customers is. Now, this is because there are, you know, as many systems as there are types of industry and so you know it can feel very overwhelming because there'll be people over here saying you know use Instagram stories I just show up and do Instagram stories every day and I have like you know um, clients beating you know ideal clients beating down my door and thrusting money at me or someone over here will say it's YouTube videos or Facebook lives or and so in this stage what I see a lot of people doing and this is where a lot of people are stuck in in three you know, they've had some success, but they can't make it consistent. Um, this is where we are inclined to do what I call a strategy switch. So, you know, we'll be, we'll fall down the rabbit hole, the online rabbit hole, and we'll be looking at, um, you know, we'll probably be doing lots of free trainings and going to webinars and opting into um, freebies and all of that stuff, because everybody um, is, telling us that they have the secret to overnight success. They have the magic bullet that is going to propel you from, you know, the feast and famine stage, as I call it, where you get, you know, a, a client or two and then nothing for months and then, you know, and then something, you get more business and then nothing for months again to this, you know, the holy grail of sustainable and consistent income. But because what happens is, what happens for a lot of people is they try the strategy it may not um, be aligned for them and their business um, and their personality 
um, or they don't give enough time for the strategy to work. And then while they're, you know, despairing at the fact that it's not working for them, someone else comes along and says, no, 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 it's not Instagram stories. What you want to do is this. And so, um, and because all of these people are selling their secret systems, they're selling the, you know, the seven steps to um, seven figures and all of that uh, nonsense, as I like to call it. Um, it's, and they're using things like, you know, manipulation, fear of missing out, false scarcity, and they, you know, they play on our fears and our, um, and our insecurities about, can we ever make this work? Is this ever going to work for me? You know, can I really do this? Um, so it, it, you know, it plays on all of that. So we jump, we jump ship and we go, okay, you know, this person sounds really convincing. So I'm going to go with this person and I'm going to um, try this strategy. Um, and, you know, what happens is you're switching all the time. So you don't ever get traction in the strategy that you're, that you're, you know, that you're trying. And of course, there's so much more than just the strategy. You know, when we look to other people for them to tell us their strategy and we don't take the time to figure out, is this uh, the right strategy for me? Is it the right strategy for my business? Um, we, we do ourselves a disservice. And what I see more often than not is people coming to me after they have tried to follow a lot of mainstream advice about things like, you know, using pushy marketing tactics, posting on Instagram 10 times a day or whatever it might be. And they, they feel not only disillusioned with the way the tactic is being deployed, but also the tactic itself. And so a lot of work I often do with people in the beginning stages is helping them to figure out what would they actually enjoy to do? Because all of these strategies can work. That's the thing. Um, there is no magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. If you do anything, as long as it's sound it's a sound strategy if you do anything long enough and well enough um you, you will find success it's just whether or not you can be consistent in that strategy if it's not something that is aligned with your uh, personal and professional values so um my suggested focus for this stage so this is stage three we're still in um the begin stage is to focus on two strategies that have for me, stood the test of time. And they, they also um, cross lots of different tools. So they cross, you know, Pinterest and Instagram stories and any new or recent fads. And these are content creation, using content marketing. So creating content that speaks to your uh, clients and customers and that demonstrates your expertise and outreach to grow your audience. And that is, you know, just showing up. I mean, I have plenty of resources which I can link to in the comments on both um, content marketing and outreach. Uh, but they're, they're basically the tools that I know that, 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 they don't change. These aren't things that will go out of fashion. These aren't things that are going to change because Facebook closes if it ever did or, you know, Instagram, you know, brings out another format. These are, these are things that work across all of those uh, gimmicky things and tools and um, tactics that a lot of people talk about. So uh, creating valuable content for your people and using outreach, which is basically being in connection with people and being of service and showing up with generosity and just being a good, useful, helpful person online to your idle uh, clients. So Moving on to stage four, and I'm just checking the comments again, if anything is unclear here, because I know Gillian and Laura are both saying that you're in stage three. So do let me know if that makes sense to you, what I've shared there, if there's anything um, that you want to ask specifically from the place of being in stage three, um, let me know, just drop it in the comments and I'll, and I'll come back to it. So stage four, this is what I call sustain. And this is where things start to feel a little easier. This is the place you get to when you think, okay, I figured it out. I know if I do more of this, I will get more business. Um, so this was me when I figured out that, you know, if I show up consistently with my content um, and my outreach, I will get clients. You know, I, 
I will have a steady flow of new people finding me and coming to me and hiring me. It's just, it, it's just how it works. And it's why they're the two strategies that I focus a lot of my teaching around. Um, so, you know, you get to this place where you're like, I, I know, I know roughly what I need to do in order to make more business. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will do what you need to do. It just means that you have now some insight into what needs to happen. You know, here is where you'll probably have all your business expenses covered, your personal um, outgoings covered, um, but not much more than that, you know? So you're, you're, you're okay, you know? You're okay. You no longer have to panic about, you know, where the next penny is coming from. But if you were to lose a client or two here or, um, you know, one of your income streams dried up, you'd be in, you'd be in trouble because there's not much wriggle room here. So you're making sustainable, consistent income, but you're not quite out of the woods because there's not much wiggle room. And if you wanted to do, you know, a luxury month, take a month off and go and spend uh, a month in Costa Rica, um, you know, maybe at this stage, you're not quite at that point yet. So here is where we can, uh, and I can speak from personal experience here, this is where we tend to overwork. This is where we, um, you know, we've got to a place where we know how to make money and so we're bringing the clients in, but we haven't yet figured it out how to do so in a way that isn't exhausting. So maybe at this stage you can't afford um, to hire help or outsource um, because again, you're in that place of not too much wiggle room. So you're doing everything yourself and you're, um, you're, you're working really hard. You're working harder than you have because the work is now coming. It is now coming, but you haven't yet perhaps got all of the systems in place to automate, to make sure that you're not, you know, you're not burning out. And a pitfall here is that you might get complacent with your success. You might be like, oh, okay, I've got it, you know, and you might stop working on some of the longer term strategies. So I'll give you an example from my business. This is where um, I have to, I have to watch it often. Outreach um, is one of the best ways for me uh, to get new clients. What it looks like for me is things like uh, connecting with people online, uh, reaching out to my aud members of my audience, people who have subscribed and I can see it open in all my newsletters or are commenting regularly on my content and, you know, seeing if I can help them in some way. That might look like then giving them a free uh, coaching session and often my complimentary sessions convert into paying clients. And so um, if I'm doing a lot of outreach, um, I can be certain that I will get more incoming inquiries and leads about working with me but of course when I get really busy with clients one of the first things that goes is outreach because I don't have the time to be having you know virtual coffee dates or giving complimentary sessions um because I'm I'm I have a full client load so this is this is something that you need to look out for at this stage um and here the focus is is to streamline, basically. It's to look, take a long, hard look at your business um, and step back. And at this stage, probably, you know, you've been building this over a couple of years, um, adding things in, new new income streams, new products and services. This is where I would, I would take a step back and look at what you're offering and uh, get rid of anything that's not really working for you. This is what I did um, last year when I shut down my Female Business Academy. I built it up, I'd been running it for a couple of years. It was bringing in some money, but it wasn't, it, the drain on my energy uh, was, was far greater than the financial reward I was getting for the work. And I could have grown, it was at that point where it was like, do I really go for it and market this and really plow in extra resources to market it? Um, or do I let it go? And it was a hard decision to make, but I, I let it go. And I created a, a different service, my mastermind, um, that took less energy from me and brought in more income, which is what we want to do with our business model. So um, this is what you want to be doing at this uh, stage of the game. It's like really looking at your business model. What, where can I uh, lose some things that I've been doing? Another thing that I did at this stage is I stopped offering new things because I'd been in this like must offer new things, must create new products and services, must you know do free challenges and this and all of the things. 
um, I stopped. So in 2019, I, at the beginning of the year, I made a commitment to not launch anything new for the entire year, which was unheard of for me. Um, 2018, I, for goodness knows how many things I launched. Um, so, and, and actually ended up having the most profitable year of my, um, of this business, uh, you know, so far. So sometimes we, fall into the trap of thinking we must do more in order to make more and actually at this stage we can find that by doing less we we receive more we get more so i'm just i noticed that laura's written a comment here so my blog writing has been a struggle during the pandemic i feel a full range of emotions and find writing a big challenge yeah i mean you're not alone with that laura i think um you know i know that i'm i'm saying that content and outreach is uh are two of two of my trusted and favorite strategies to use for business growth. I mean, and what I would say here is look for other ways. I've actually got a blog post called uh, how to market your business if you don't like writing. Now I know that you do like writing, um, so it's not a case of not liking it. It's just that you maybe haven't been feeling able to show up in that way. But, you know, these are really, really challenging times. This is not unusual I myself I just wrote my first newsletter in a month I took a whole month off which is unheard of for me I don't think I've done that since I started since I really committed to my weekly newsletter over two years ago um, because yeah I mean for me it was it's the pandemic and and um, you know all of the the Black Lives Matter stuff really affected me um, and my emotions and I just didn't feel able to put content out over the last month and so on one level I want to say to you you know just honor that and uh honor the fact that 2020 has been one of the craziest years I think any of us have has ever seen um and and also at the same time look for ways that you can show up for your business that maybe don't involve writing in a in a personal or vulnerable way you know i know laura for me that you know the, the kinds of things that you write about and share it's very um personal and when we're struggling with our emotions um that can be tricky so what i would advise there is you know try and write less personal things try and look at things um you know maybe more um strategic or how to or top tips those kinds of things that maybe don't we don't feel like we have to feel emotionally balanced uh to work on or find a different way of showing up for your business other than writing if that feels easier um it might be it could be video it might be um it might be video without you talking. Um, I, I don't know. It could be a present, you know, it could be slides. It could be anything. There, there's lots of different ways that you might show up for your business um, that helps you get around this. But I, I, I acknowledge how hard it's been. You're not the only person who said this to me. So moving on. So that was stage four. Moving on to stage five. Um, this is Prosper. So this is this is where we're all, you know, this is the holy grail. This is where your business does more than cover its expenses and, and uh, your personal expenses. This is where you've got money to spare. Uh, this is where you can probably uh, hire help. Um, I mean, you, you can hire help in uh, Sustain as well. I would, I would always advise that you try to outsource or uh, get you know someone on your team to support you sooner rather than later the sooner you can the better um, but here it may be it feels a lot easier to hire a VA or to have someone finally um, you know do a professional overhaul of your website or or any number of things that you know before you couldn't afford this is where you know you might have spare money to clear debt to invest in your business to start saving to buy the house you've always dreamed of um, this is what most people want to get to in three to six months of starting their business and I have to kind of like tell them that it takes a little bit longer than that um, and so this is where your business model is working for you you know you know ahead of time what you're likely to make the next month um, and you can predict 
the kind of growth that you might see because you've been at this game a couple of years. You have, you know, hopefully tracked your um, financial growth over the years. So you can say, okay, you know, last year I, my business grew financially you know, 28% on the year before. So looking at the figures and knowing that I'm going to bring in this extra um, service and the kinds of, uh, you know, the numbers of subscribers that I see myself getting month on month, this is where I expect to be. Um, we we have that certainty. We know what's coming. We, we know what's coming around the corner, which is wonderful. And if we lose a client or two here, it doesn't matter because we have enough money uh, to cover everything anyway. And also we're confident that even if we lose a few clients, we'll get a few more because we're in a tra trajectory of growth. So possible pitfalls here um, are that you may try to hold on to everything that you've been doing so far in your business. You know, when we've, when we finally got to that place where we're like, I can say that it works, you know, it works and um, everything is uh, working thanks to all of my hard work, then it can be quite hard to then hand that over, you know, maybe to hire an online business manager or a VA or to say, okay, I'm going to put all the marketing out to uh, outsource it to somebody else. That can feel very hard to do when we think that our success is wrapped up in, in us and that, you know, if we were to change anything, um, we might see that success unravel. So we try to hold on to what we've been doing so far, but in order to really, you know, continue growing and to not, and to be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor, so step back from our business a little bit, take more time um, to spend time with our children or our partners or, you know, travel and all of the things that we became um, business owners for, so we would have that freedom. We have to we have to be willing to let go of the reins a little. We have to be willing to delegate and to outsource and to hire support. Um, and that means adjusting your role in the business. So maybe you're doing less of, you know, dealing with daily emails that come into your inbox. Maybe you have someone who is handling your inbox, somebody who is um, dealing with the clients. And that can be scary for a lot of business owners, especially conscious business owners, heart-centered business owners who are in this because they love their people. But if you want to um, continue growing without burning out, these are things that, that must happen. Um, so yeah, the suggested focus here is that allow... Um, allow systems, processes, and other people to take, um, to do some of the heavy lifting in your business so that you can step back more into, into a CEO role, into a leadership role in your business, and less of the hands-on stuff, which if you're anything like me is, uh, is tricky to do, but absolutely essential if you're, if you're gonna take more time off and enjoy it. So in a nutshell, in a very small nutshell, they are the five stages as I see them. I'd love to know if you've got any questions about those stages. Um, this is a model that I've, uh, I've come up with based on my experience and the experience of my clients and also doing other research on uh, the business growth journey as other people have defined it. If you, if you did a search on uh, business growth journey, you'd find different different descriptions, different stages and different descriptions for those stages. So uh, this is my version. I want to develop this model a little bit more. Um, I would love your thoughts um, and questions on it. And then finally, what I wanted to um, ask you to do here. So this is where I'm just going to, to my last page of notes. Um, this is where I'd like you to consider the journey so so i want you to do two things as a result of this facebook live i want you to consider where you are in the journey and what has come up as a result of what i've shared here if you've got any questions i'd love for you to put in the comments this is the stage i think i'm at based on what you've said and this is what i actually am struggling with so maybe what i've said are the pitfalls or the struggles is different to what um you're experiencing i'd love to know from you directly um this is this is my greatest struggle right now then I want you to take a step back from your business and I want you to consider the journey that your clients take. So for example, I, I'm talking about the business growth journey because I'm a business coach and I help people along that journey. You will help your clients along a different journey. So it might be a journey of creativity. It might be a journey of language learning. So for example, uh, if you're a language 
uh, teacher. You may take your clients through stages like beginner, intermediate, advanced, and fluency. Um, if you're a life coach, you might take people through a journey of transformation that looks like you know being in the struggle, having self-awareness about that struggle, practicing new ways of being, and then ultimately um, entering the final stage of of the ch- you know of changing of of having um, a different life because of the transformation that you have undergone. I mean, they're they're just things that I have come up with. Um, so what I'd love you to do is just think about your business, the service that you provide, the clients that you um, work with, and the journey that you take them on. And what's amazing about that is that you can start to then map your products and services to those stages. And there may well be stages within that journey that you don't work on. So for example, I don't really have clients in stage five of Prosper. I tend to work with people in uh, begin. Um, the earlier stages of prepare, begin and sustain. I, that's where I hang out. That's where my ideal clients are. So I either have people who are quite early on in the journey or they're at stage three um, where they're, they've had some success, but they don't quite yet know how to make it consistent. Um, and knowing that is really, really useful for me as a business owner because I can then create my products and services accordingly. Um, and so I invite you to do a similar thing for your business and see if you can come up with, um, you know, I'd, I'd suggest three to five or three to seven at the most stages of a journey that you actually take your clients on. So hopefully that's been helpful. I'm going to just wait um, a couple of seconds to see if anyone has any questions. Um, Laura's saying thank you. Uh, Jenny's saying helpful, uh, super useful. Okay, Jillian's saying number three, I want to work out what my way of marketing is that I can, yes, yeah. I will post in the comments the, uh, the post I mentioned about ways to market if you don't, even if you don't love uh, writing. I'd be curious to know, Gillian, if writing is one of your, um, you know, one of the ways that you like to communicate with your audience. I mean, I like to reframe marketing as connection. You know, when we think of marketing to our audience, um, it feels icky and stressful and we just don't want to do it. And if we, uh, reframe that as connecting with our audience it suddenly takes on a whole new light and then you know creating content that connects with our audience or actually talking to our audience reaching out um that also feels a lot nicer than marketing too and now Anne says hi Carol I've been stuck in the desire stage for about three years yeah it can that can happen um and yeah yeah, I'm curious, Anne. I mean, feel free to send me a direct message or post in the comments, whichever you prefer. And just let me know um, how clear you are on what you want to do. Or if there, how do I put it? If there is something other than, you say self-confidence has been the main thing holding you back. Is it self-confidence about uh, your abilities? Is it in the idea is it that you don't believe you're not sure you have the right idea like or are you where are you in this in terms of are you super clear on what you want to do and why you want to do it yet you just haven't got the confidence to do it um or are you struggling to even know what it would be that you would do um just give me that information you can put it in the comments or you can uh send me a direct message either way and i'll do what i can uh to help you out with that Okay, I think that's everything. I've gone on longer than I uh, meant to, but um, I'm super excited to have people here actually on the on the Facebook Live and asking questions. If anything else comes up, um, I love to be in contact with people. You can put comments here. You can email me directly, um, whichever whichever you prefer. If you if you've got a question on what I've shared and you don't want to talk about it publicly, email me. My email address is caroline at carolineleon.com. And I hope to be doing more of these lives um, on a regular basis. So if there's a topic that you would love me to talk about, just let me know. And I hope to see you all again soon. Take care, lovelies.